It's only game. Why you have to be mad? What is up heroes of Dominion? My name is Charlie. This is Hero Wars Central and in today's video I want to talk a little bit about the new heroes that we have on Hero Wars Mobile that is Corvus and Morgan But instead of our usual video, I want to talk about what I think is the best way to counter these heroes uh, Some of you may have seen the introduction to undead heroes live stream that the community managers put on It was a it was a pretty informative 45 minutes or so of a live stream I'm pretty sure that Charles knows uh, everything. Knows the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that it would be kind of cool to expand a little bit on what they were talking about. Uh, there, towards the end, we talked a little bit about strong ways to counter teams that use Corvus and Morgan. So as we were watching the video, it became very apparent that anybody who does fast, low damage attacks or area of effect attacks are going to be susceptible to... Uh, Corvus's totem or altar or whatever you want to call it in the back and it just wasn't going to end up good for your Kira or your Lars or you know Galahad or whoever and we also know that Corvus as a tank has one of the lowest armor values of any tanks in the game now Morgan does provide a nice armor buff in her bone armor skill and that's it's quite a bit it's right here. Bone armor. It's quite a bit of armor and magic defense added to uh, added to your team, including Corvus, obviously. But it's not up all the time. So uh, one of the things that they had suggested was using heroes that do large amounts of damage in uh, a less amount of hits. Heroes like Kark, for example. Now this isn't going to be a Kark video. Kark is just kind of the hero that they had uh, that they had suggested using during the live stream, and the reason for it is because of Kark's ability to do massive amount of damage to three heroes at once using deadly tendrils. It's it's a uh, it's an ability that's kind of based on him doing his ultimate. It doesn't happen over and over and over really frequently, kind of like how Kira attacks five enemies at once every basic attack. Uh, so so an enemy like I'm sorry, a hero like this could be beneficial. But I also got to thinking of what other heroes could be good in a situation where you're up against Corvus and Morgan and. We already know, like I mentioned, we're using physical heroes. There's probably some very strong mage teams out there that does this or similar. But today's video, I want to focus on physical heroes to counter Corvus and Morgan. And also, just a little disclaimer before I take one more step. I don't personally have any of these teams leveled up. And as such, I have no idea of their effectiveness. This is just me kind of talking through some ideas that myself and some of my friends and others in the Discord have uh, have chatted about in the Hero Wars Central Discord. So the first hero that we mentioned, Kark, obviously a good choice. Kark is a popular team. Uh, however, I want to do something a little bit different. Now, they mentioned real briefly the hero Ju. And Ju is interesting in that he's a marksman that does single target damage. His attack power overall is low, but he does have both armor penetration and critical hit. Um, he doesn't have uh, he doesn't have it a lot here, but um, he can definitely get access to both using, I believe it's, yeah, his glyphs. So his skills all target single targets. Now, you will not stop me will prevent him from dying while he's got an increased attack speed. And this is very beneficial against Corvus's altar. Right, so no matter how many times and you know how, how quickly Jew attacks Corvus or others, uh, the totem won't be able to kill Jew. The totem won't be able to retaliate against Jew. So you have that. You have I will take your life, which does bonus pure damage uh, on top of his basic attacks. Um, I'm not sure if that counts as a second attack. I don't believe it does. If it did count as a second attack uh, for each basic attack, then it would be it would be pretty detrimental to Jew's life. I guess I'll need to double check that. You have ICU, which focuses on the rearmost enemy. Uh, might be faceless, might be Phobos, considering a lot of people are going to be dumping faceless and Phobos into these teams. Uh, if you're going up against a team that's a little bit more thought out, maybe they're using Martha in the back, obviously Jew's not going to work. But then you have the Spirits Will Heal Me, and this is an ability that will heal Jew whenever he fires off his ultimate. So now not only are you doing massive, uh, you're doing an increased attack speed, um, doing a lot, a lot of hits really quick, against the frontmost enemy, which is, you know, Corvus the tank with low armor. Jew is doing critical hits often. He is doing armor penetration, not that he really needs it, but his low armor penetration doesn't matter that much because 
uh, you know, Corvus has low armor to begin with, but he's also healing himself up as the totem is dealing damage to him. So Jew is the first of the four heroes that I kind of wanted to discuss um, today. I think Jew would be a strong choice to counter Corvus teams. Now, what you what teams you choose to level with Jew? That's a different story altogether. That's another video entirely. You know, do you want to level up? You know, Cleaver with them? Probably not against Corvus. Maybe you use a Chaba or an Aurora against Corvus. Hard to say what tank to use. As far as healers, you know, Dorian's a good choice for physical attackers. Martha, great choice. You could use Celeste. A lot of good opportunities to use with Jew. Um, check out, you know, good team builds for Jew and for all these. This video isn't about building teams. This is about specific heroes. So another strong hero that I want to talk about, and, and again, I mentioned that I really want to talk about four, is Ishmael. Now, Ishmael is kind of fallen off in popularity uh, since his... Uh, since his nerf, and Ishmael has a couple of strong abilities that I also feel will be beneficial to uh, countering Corvus. So Ishmael might have an issue considering that he does attack everybody in front of him, so he cleaves, which is a multi-attack, so he does do multiple attacks to enemies in the front. If you're dealing with a ton of skeletal minions from Morgan's ultimate, then Ishmael might not be the best choice. It might be fast enough, it might be just fine. Um, again, I'm not sure, but he does have his own armor penetration, he does have critical hit chance as well for those spiky hits, but... Um, Ishmael, his his bread and butter, Ishmael's bread and butter is tearing through tanks with low armor, okay? And what do we have in Corvus but a tank with low armor? So Awakening will increase his critical hit chance and attack speed. Uh, since Ishmael also has vampirism, hopefully, hopefully his vampirism is enough to keep him alive as he's attacking faster. 150% attack speed is quite a bit faster. Uh, so this is one way to um to you know quickly drop that tank and maybe clear out a bunch of skeleton minions at the same time all right and it doesn't go away immediately it, you know it degrades over time you have dodge which will help against all the little skeletal minions not so much against uh corvus specifically you have dark craft which increases his vampirism by quite a bit you know as he as he continues to level up and then storm blades this will stun corvus for one second every fourth hit so you're attacking faster with uh, awakening you have uh, storm blades stunning corvus every hit uh, i'm sorry every four hits good little bit of uh, uh, front end damage for the weak armor corvus all right so that's the second hero i wanted to chat about the third and fourth hero i'm pretty excited about because i had been leveling up all along i want to talk about elmer first because elmer is kind of the more obvious um the more obvious choice where's my elmer where is my elmer here here he is so elmer Elmer is a lot of fun too. Elmer can dodge like crazy. Elmer has one of the highest armor penetrations in the game. Again, not that it really matters. He doesn't do critical hits, but what he does do well is he attacks a single target and he does a lot of damage to a single target. And he also removes himself from the front line uh, whenever he gets in danger using his, uh, his ultimate. So this pushes him away, right? Gets him away from the front end, gets him away from the skeletons, gets him away from... Uh, you know, just any general, generally anybody that's attacking the front line, which, you know, that's what Corvus's ultimate does. We have Mirage, which activates more Sand Clones. Um, you know, you guys know his abilities. The Sand Clones can attack with perfect blades. And then Many Truths gives, you know, gives his uh, Sand Clones to be uh, two or four copies instead. So what you end up having is a ton of, a ton of Elmers that are all attacking a single target, ideally targeting that frontmost weak armor Corvus. Uh, Elmer's physical attack isn't the highest in the game, but it's pretty high. And with his high armor penetration against such a low armored target, Elmer could tear through the enemy Corvus quick enough that it won't matter. And I think that this is a strong candidate to counter Corvus Morgan. But to me, the most interesting idea by far, and again, I can't take credit for any of these. It's just um, Arcana and a bunch of others talking about it in our discord is the use of Astrid and Lucas. Okay. So go for it, Lucas. Astrid will send Lucas to attack the front line. A couple of important points about Lucas. Lucas does not take damage. Okay. Every time Lucas gets hit, like from a totem or an enemy skeleton or an enemy tank or whatever, every time Lucas takes damage, he just loses rage. He doesn't take extra damage. He doesn't take pure damage. He doesn't take magic damage. He just loses rage. While Lucas is in rage form, he's still gaining rage from Astrid in the back 
still gaining Rages as she attacks. So because Lucas will 100% tank whatever damage that he throws out against the front, the you know the weak armored tank that is Corvus, you know hit, the fact that Lucas will attack in, in in physical attack and attack quickly, you know very very fast attacks, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, won't matter. The totem will be completely negated against Lucas. Okay, so that's part one. The, there is a counter argument that maybe the totem will uh, reduce Lucas's energy too quickly so that it won't actually matter. But then you have Rampant Nature, which increases the attack and skill speed by nine seconds. This increases uh, Lucas's attack and skill speed if if uh, Lucas is in rage form. So now you have a Lucas that's attacking much faster. You have Predator's Charge, right? Every time Astrid, I'm sorry, every time Lucas deals damage, he does more damage with every attack. So the longer that Lucas is up there attacking, the more damage he's doing to that weak armored Corvus. And then finally, kind of the bread and butter, this ability right here, Tracker's Mark, will stun Corvus every time Lucas hits him. Every time Lucas hits Corvus, he will be stunned. It's an amazing ability. It's an amazing ability. One more thing to note, which is why I think Luke, Astrid and Lucas is going to be, you know, the number one choice, I think, opinion, again, you know, we'll see, time will tell, is that Astrid and Lucas has the highest physical attack in the game, I believe, and if it's not the number one, it's the number, it's in the top three, the highest, um, the highest physical attack in the game, Astrid and Lucas has enough armor penetration to ignore Corvus's armor until, of course, an artifact armor weapon goes off, you know, uh, Corvus's or somebody else's. And even then, it's ten, uh, Corvus's armor is 10,000 armor less than the next stronger tank. So the high armor penetration and high physical attack, I believe, is going to push Astrid and Lucas into the number one spot to counter Corvus and Morgan. Okay? Just as an honorable mention, because it might not work, uh, because I mentioned it during the live stream, and uh, they call that out specifically. Um, the Facebook and web version of Daredevil has a, a skill set that puts enemies on fire. The, uh, the mobile version of Daredevil is much better. You have um, shooting the nearest target five times. Uh, first of all, Daredevil has extremely low health. Extremely low health. So I, I think that Daredevil may be okay, but it'll only be in a team that you're able to kill the enemy very quickly. So if it ends up that like an Elmer, Daredevil, Astrid, Lucas team... Uh, can kill the other team quick enough, then this should be fine. But her her rapid fire ability is going to cause a lot of self hurt with Corvus's totem because she shoots five times. Her big bada boom hits five enemies, probably more, considering that you're going to have a couple of skeletons summoned. So five to ten enemies, five to well, I guess five to eleven, I should say. Uh, that's that's a lot of retribution damage as well from that totem. Um, and then you have fire support. Fire support says that every time an enemy behind Daredevil, I'm sorry, anytime an ally behind Daredevil attacks, Daredevil will do an additional attack. So, so now you have even more additional attacks beyond, you know, what we've what we've got. Uh, and then, you know, this ability doesn't really harm her much, but having an increased physical attack as the fight goes on, the more times Daredevil crits, this this will help. But I I don't know. I don't know if this and her high critical hit chance and her high physical attack as the bill as the fight goes on is enough to outweigh the fact that she she attacks very fast a single target sure but she attacks very fast with rapid fire and fire support so we'll see maybe we'll see i'll probably use daredevil in my main team until i go up against another corvus and morgan team and then i'll pull daredevil out you know we'll We'll kind of have to see how that goes. But yeah, I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video. And even if this doesn't end up being, you know, the four to five heroes that will uh, will the, will be the big counter to, um, to Corvus and Morgan here on Hero Wars Mobile, I hope it's putting some ideas in your head about different ways to use different kinds of heroes. I know that there's a lot of people who are really upset about how Corvus, you know, completely demolishes area of effect heroes and how Morgan completely demolishes Astaroth and, you know, my, I guess to a lesser extent Rufus. But I want you to think, you know, just take a step back and think about the fact that there are 40 plus heroes in this game and the developers aren't going to intentionally put a hero in the game or, or two heroes for that matter that are completely unbeatable. It's just, it's just not going to be the case. Join some discords, join some Facebook groups, chat it out with your fellow Hero Wars players, maybe in your guild. Uh, there are ways to beat these heroes, absolutely. And I think I think what we've discussed today in this video are uh, good starts, good starts. So let's wrap the video up here. I've got a couple of uh, linked videos on screen now talking about other 
uh, combinations of, of the heroes that I've mentioned already. Um, I love you all. Good luck in Dominion.